Hello, everybody, and welcome back to some more Pokemon Why No Healing in Battle Wedlock Challenge. In the last episode, we went ahead west of the Dendemil Town and explored all of Route 16, even catching ourselves a Pumpkaboo, which was really cool. And I said in this episode we would be taking on the Lost Hotel, and uh, by the thumbnail, you guys can tell, we are not taking on the Lost Hotel. I, it is not Tuesday yet, and I wanted to record another video, because I need to be a certain amount of videos ahead, and I wanted to get ahead right now. So, um, we'll do the Lost Hotel in the next episode, because I want a chance at Rotom. I know I could just do it right now, get a Trubbish, Garbodor, Litwick, whatever, but I want a, a chance at a Rotom. I think it'd be really interesting to use in a wedlock, especially since I can go ahead and change any of its forms, which would be really cool. It'd be really diverse and interesting, and I just think it'd be a lot of fun. So, we are going to be doing the Frost Cavern this episode. And as you guys know... Oh, this guy's a Vibrava, by the way, and I know his name is Hiker Ross. So, there we go, fighting Bob Ross. Even though there's a painter literally, like, five seconds away from here, they decide to name the Hiker Ross for some reason. I don't know understand it but as you guys know we've been playing really well this playthrough we are still going strong doing excellently we're almost to the seventh gym and we have not had a death since before the third gym it's been a really long time and i've been playing really well i've been really lucky i've just overall had a really solid team but that's all going to change this episode. No, I'm not fighting that. I don't do those. I don't, I don't mess with no Scott Train. You know, if they're uh, they're unfair. That's why I don't do them. Because you can only fight them with flying types and Pokemon with Levitate. And they, a lot of them have, like, ice types and electric types and stuff like that. It's just completely unfair. That's why I don't do the Sky Trainers if you happen to be new here. Forget you, Trevor. Go away. Nobody likes you. Just shut up, please. Even Marilyn's mean to Trevor. And Marilyn's just this amazingly nice guy and stuff. I'm like, look at Trevor. Like, <laughs> look at him. You have to bully Trevor. Whatever. Um, the next guy's a painter, like I said. I'm pretty certain that they have a Smeargle. <sighs> you see, it could have Rock Tomb. I'm aware of this. It's a Smeargle for one thing. And for another thing, it, it probably doesn't have a Rock-type attack, since we're at, like, an icy area. So, let's just fight the painter guy. But yeah, this episode's gonna be really difficult. This is one of the hardest areas in the entire game. If not the hardest area in the entire game. It's very likely that we have a death this episode. Or more than one. It's definitely possible we could lose half of our team this episode. Especially seeing as how half of my team is weak to ice. Which is what... Oh! <gasps> it does have a rock type attack! Okay, it's, it's, it's just the Smeargle. Just the Smeargle. It's, it's just, just the Smeargle. <laughs> That's right. I actually panicked, though, really hard. But, once again, it's it's just a Smeargle. Smeargle can't kill anything in one hit. Except, like, with Drill Pack or Horn Drill or something like that. But, yeah, half of our team is weak to ice. And you would think there'd be a lot of ice types in here, but there's actually more fighting types, from what I remember. So, we're pretty good against fighting. Only one Pokemon weak to fighting. And we have two Pokemon that are super effective against it, so... Hopefully everything goes according to plan. We have Moo Moo Milk now, which is really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and heal up Alinta. And then we can head inside of the Frost Cavern. Now, unfortunately, we're going to play the game where Chroma says, I want this Pokemon really bad, and then Chroma doesn't get said Pokemon. There's a Pokemon that I've ha I have wanted to use on the channel, and in my personal time, almost the entire time since it's been a thing. Since I started these challenges, I wanted to use this one Pokemon more than anything and i can probably re i'm not doing that actually let's do it with alinta uh and i can reassure you i'm not going to get a chance to use this pokemon in this playthrough it is a four percent chance in all of the frost cavern and it's just really unlikely that i get one i've always wanted to use a cryogonal but it's just not going to happen but if i had to be realistic i want a bergmite I do not, no matter what, want a Jinx. 
please don't give me a jinx. And in saying that, I probably jinxed it. So, my encounter for the Frost Cavern. Oh, and no smoochum either. It's the same idea. My encounter for the Frost Cavern is going to be... It's not a horde battle. So no Vanillaite, which I would have also been okay with. It's a bear tick. I mean, I kind of expected bear tick. I'm okay with that. And it's level 40. So we actually might have to run from this thing. Um, I'm going to acrobatics it. And if we kill it, we kill it. We haven't killed an encounter for a long time. Yeah, I didn't think so. Swagger. Okay. I'm not entirely sure. Mmm. Um, I'm not too sure. Okay, guys, sorry about that. My mom had to cough, and I didn't want her to not have to cough because of me. Alright, so we have Dust Balls, which is pretty good. What I'm worried about is it using Icicle Crash. As you guys saw in a couple episodes ago, Icicle Crash is pretty deadly. And if I absolutely have to, I will run away from this Bear Tick. I'm not going to lose this one of our Pokemon trying to catch a wild one. It's just not worth it in my eyes. And I'm not going to attack it again because we are confused and I think we would hurt ourselves. So I'm going to go for Dust Ball again. We're in a cave, so this should be increased. Hopefully we can just go ahead and grab this Bear Tick up. I think it'd be really cool to use. Not quite. Ah, uh, that's kind of unfortunate. Flail's fine. I would hope that it would get flame bodied here. No, not un unfortunately not. All right, I'm gonna throw another one. We use up all our dust balls here. Who knows? We might have to run from it. It would it would be unfortunate, but I mean, I didn't have anything else I could lead this fight with. All right, yeah, we did. We did get bear tick, which is really cool. I'm definitely pleased with that. It's not the worst thing in the cave. Jinx is the worst thing in the cave. I probably would have killed it. Been there, done that, never again. Anyways, Bear Tick is the freezing Pokemon. It freezes its breath to create fangs and claws of ice to fight with. Cold northern areas are its habitat. He who tames the iron horse. If I was doing references, I would totally name this Bear Tick John Bazan. But we're not, so I won't. But my naming theme is Survivor Tribes. So I'm going to go ahead and check out my Survivor Tribe naming theme list. Find a suitable name for this Bear Tick. And I'll be right back. All right, guys. I got a name for this thing. This is from Season 17 of Survivor. Gabon. 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 I'm pretty sure it's Gabon. I always forget. It's like when I'm, like, saying, oh, I know how it's pronounced, and I say one thing, but I actually meant the other one. It's kind of like that. Also, Bear Tick is a special number to me backwards in this. Not the National Dex, but that number right there. Anyways, I just thought I'd point that out. It's one of the original two starting tribes from Season 17 of Survivor. And it's a Betty Bahuan ethnic subgroup. It has nothing to do with that, but it has more to do with the way its name is spelled. But it is definitely pronounced a different way. Even though the tribe mates pronounced it in the way you would think it's actually pronounced a certain way. You'll know what I mean, but read its bio. It has something to do with that. So with that being said, the name that I'm going to be giving this bear tick is... Fong. We have Fong. The bear tick. It is not Fang. It is Fang. So, that's really cool. Nice work. We got a bear tick. Let's head back to the PC and also ignore Discord. I apologize. Let's head back to the Pokemon Center and check out Fang. All right. Here we are in the PC with our female quiet snow cloak, Fang. The bear tick. So, snow cloak's the only ability it can have and quiet is pretty terrible. I mean, I think they can be special attackers, too. I think they can get Surf and stuff. So, I mean, hey, that's okay with me. All right, so we have, now we have more females than males. By uh, just one. So, maybe the next Pokemon we'll get will be a male. Who knows? All right, guys. With our encounter being done with, we can come over here and grab an Ice Heal, which is very fitting for the upcoming area. And you can't use your Dazzling Machine here. Oh, yeah, you can. Never mind. I thought it was, like, the... Reflection Cave. Yeah, that's it. Um, this girl, if you guys aren't aware... Ooh, I didn't spray Repel. That's right. Uh, Shiny Cryogonal? No, just a bear tick. <laughs> one can dream. One can dream. I mean, I probably would go without Repels in a regular playthrough for that chance of a Shiny, but, I mean, we have training and stuff. Anyways, what I was going to say is for you, uh, all of you unaware, this trainer right here actually has a Dublade. So... 
Alenta will be my best bet for that. We have plenty of repels to get through here. We also have another honey that we could have used if we wanted a vanillaite. And Cub Chew's also there. So we could have ended up with Bear Tick anyways. And there's also Smoochum. I probably would have went for a Horde Battle if there wasn't Smoochum. But I probably would have been screwed over with a Smoochum. And for all of you guys that may be thinking, why do you hate Smoochum? Why do you hate Jinx? Level 46? Dang. That's pretty crazy. Um, I don't hate Jinx. Actually, I actually have a dog named Jinx for anybody that happens to be a new viewer. Or a newer viewer. Um, okay, that kind of scares me. I don't know how that works with the blade. The blade. Uh, it's probably going to work in its favor pretty well. But I think we should be fine to keep playing Charger. Oh, it should be lower defense now. Eh, it didn't change too much, so I'm not too concerned. And it just swaps right back. Amazing AI. 10 out of 10 would do again. It's 11 out of 10, actually. 11 out of 10. But yeah, I don't hate Jinx. They just have really low defense, and they're pretty much unusable in a... Okay. They're pretty much unusable in a challenge like this. Where you definitely, when you can't heal, and definitely, even if you can heal, in a Nuzlocke or Wedlock, they're just way too frail to be used. They have good special defense, but their defense makes them pretty much useless. I have learned this from experience, so... They're just a ball of stress and anxiety, basically. I don't recommend, but if you like them and you get one, go ahead. It could be useful. I doubt it, though. Um... Where's this take me? Over there? Probably, maybe. Alright, let's just go up here, because I know it's a dead end. It'll be a hidden item right here. And it's a dire hit, so... It's a waste of my time hit, basically. Um, I think the next guy has a Marowak, from what I remember. I don't know why, but I kind of remember a Marowak. Oh, that would be a bad idea. Don't do that. Um... Uh, sure. Let's do it with Lavlor. I also kind of remember a Golduck. I don't remember if that's because I had a Golduck at this point in, the, in my Y wedlock. Also thinking on it, um, I had way less deaths in my original... Well, I had way more deaths in my original Y wedlock than I do in this one where I can't heal. My original Y wedlock that I did was pretty successful. Um, I have... The floor up front. That's right. Okay, I was going to say, please don't be... Yeah, you know what I mean. Anyways, oh, it's a good thing we didn't fight this guy with the birds, right? That could have gone downhill bad. Kill with no. But I had, like, eight deaths, maybe, in my original Y... Well, let's count through them, actually. My original Y wedlock, I had my Butterfree, my Hone Edge. I don't remember after that. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. But I have less deaths than I did at that point in my Y wedlock. I lost my Diggersby in this cave, actually, to a trainer with a Sock and a Mean Chow. So I'll definitely never forget him or her. One of the two, so... It was... I didn't mean to fight the Black Belt with my Diggersby. I had a Greninja paired up with that Diggersby, so it was really bad. But... Yeah, it is a Golduck. I thought so. I don't know why I thought that. Oh, Zen Headbutt. What am I thinking? Um... And we're minus defense, too. I'm gonna go against my better ju judgment and actually stay in. But now I'm not. Minus three defense. No, no, no. That's not going to happen. Anyways, we're playing really well. And I don't know if it's just because I'm getting too good. Or if it's just my team. My team's not that great. I mean, these two share water weakness. They share electric weakness. Like, I don't really think it has anything to do with my team. I just... Maybe I'm playing well. I don't remember a lot of the trainers. It's not like always knowing what's going to happen. Okay. Interesting. Um, But I don't know what it is. It's just been going really well, and I know this, you know, is going to be a really hard area, so I'm not entirely certain that it's going to go well for me, but I don't know. I just kind of feel bad. Like, I wanted this challenge to be super hard, so I would get to use a lot of different Pokemon, and it's like any of my other challenges, where it goes amazingly at the beginning, and then goes downhill inevitably. Not to spoil many series, it's not like all that in all of them, but it's happened like that in most of them. <laughs> So, I don't know. Hopefully, I don't like a lot of deaths all at once, especially towards the end, because it makes it so that team that you've been with the whole game are, is gone, and the Pokemon you add on at the end don't really matter. And I don't want that to be like that. I really don't want to go through that again. I like these, these Pokemon a lot. I'm going to lose anybody. I want to start losing one Pokemon at a time, like here and there, so we can gradually add new people on instead of losing like half my team all at once, if that makes sense. I don't know. I had a Pidgeot. 
um, in my original Y Wedlock that made it to the end. I've got one in this playthrough. You know, as Jaburu is the leader, but it's bland, and I, I don't know. Like, I love Jaburu, don't get me wrong. I just like to use different Pokemon, and I'll always be like that. I like to use unique things, so... That's just my thought process on it as of right now. But speaking of Pidgeot, um, I have a funny story about um, what happened earlier, which was pretty funny. I'm going to put Nakam up front, actually, for this next fight. I think that'll be a good idea. I'm actually going to heal up LaFleur and Baramundi just because I can. And if they get brought out, because I know there's a Hariyama later on. I think it knows Whirlwind. I'm pretty certain there's a double battle with the Hariyama with Whirlwind, so that could get really sketchy. Hopefully we don't have to come across that. But funny story about Pidgeot. So, as you guys know, I always call Pidgey, uh, Pidgeot. And my girlfriend saw the episode where I talked about calling Pidgey uh, Pidgeot. And it was funny. She's like, "You do you really say Pidgeot? And I was like, yep, I've said it like my whole life. And I never actually brought this point up to her. But I do believe in the anime Brock called it a Pidgeot one time. And it's always been, it's actually canon. I don't know if that's my false memory or if that actually happened, but I'm pretty sure Brock said, oh, hey, look, a pigeon. And I've always done it since then. But that's not anything to do with the story. Actually, I think this is a graveler, so I'm going to put this up front. Maku Maku. Um, but the funny story about it is she corrected me. I was like, it's not a pigeon. It's, and she didn't say Pidgeot. Let's just put it that way. Oh, oh, my God. A relicant. Oh my god. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I've lost half of my deaths are from a relicant at this point. <gasps> and the sand stream. Uh-oh. Um, I have to earthquake it immediately. I, I, I'm panicking. I'm actually panicked. Okay, that didn't, yeah, okay. Yeah. Nice job. That's been the whole playthrough. I panic, nothing happens. Goodbye, Relicanth. Rotana and Dara have been avenged. And a Rhydon. Oh, I gotta stay in. I didn't want to fight it with Nakam, because Nakam's weak to rock, so... I mean, we can just earthquake this one as well. I don't know what we can do. I'm a, low, I'm a higher level, so it can't horn drill me. As a bulldoze me. Yeah, I'm not bothered by your bulldoze. Rhydon. Rhydon have been pretty cool. I like Rhyperior. Regardless, what I was saying is she didn't say it's Pidgeot. She said... It's a big meme, and she was like, oh my god, your channel's gonna meme me. And the joke is, she can never become a meme, basically. And I'm like the biggest meme ever, so it's like a, it's a funny joke. But this will classify her as an A-class spicy meme. You guys get ready for this one. And keep in mind, she's Canadian, and I had never even thought about it relating to Canada until after she said it. And she thought that Pidgeot was pronounced Pidgeot. I'm serious. I have never heard that one before in my life, ever. And I'm not making fun of her. I thought it was. I thought it was really cute. It was just like I thought I was bad by saying pigeon. I at least acknowledge that that's not how you pronounce it. She just full force went pigeot, and I was like, that sounds like a horrible, horrible brand of cereal. Can you imagine the Pokemon world getting your pigeots? Like, I was thinking, like, mix a box of Wheaties and, like, honey, honey nut oats or something. And that would be one concoction. Oh, I wasn't ready. Whoo! Yeah, I didn't want to fight the double battle yet. But, yeah, Pidgey Oats, guys. And then I thought to myself, oh, wait, she's Canadian. And Canadians sometimes say out as get out. So she's def basically saying Jaburu needs to get out. And it's, it's just a funny joke. I got her permission to share. She said it was cool, so I'm not making fun of her or anything. Anyways, Jaburu and Alenta are up front. I think it's a Metacham and a Hariyama, so they're my best bet. I think. Alright, people say it doesn't matter if you win or lose, but of course everyone wants to win. Oh, it's Grumpig! Alright. I mean, they have a ton of special defense, so if we can clear it with an Acrobatics and a Aerial Ace. Um, but the Hariyama is way deadlier. Because that Hariyama does no Whirlwind, from what I remember. Meaning it could bring anybody out into this fight that we don't want to see right now. And with it being two levels higher, I'm going to Feather Dance it, actually. I know that could be a risky play. And I'm going to fly. No, I'm not. I'm not flying. I'm going to Acrobatics the uh, Hariyama. 
I'm not. Oh, power gem! Power gem! I've done a stupid Grumpig nose power gem! Alinta's gonna die! No! What have I done? 11 HP. 11 HP. Oh my god. It's over. It's over. There's nothing Alinta can do to escape. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. I need to think about this carefully. Okay. I'm faster than all of them. I can fly to get out of the way. But fly won't do enough to kill the Grumpig. I need to take this opportunity to return the Grumpig. And I need Alinta to use Roost. This will make it so I'm just a fire type. Meaning Power Gem won't be four times effective. And I don't think it will kill me. But that's actually a bad idea. I need to return fly, return it. Because then it'll be dead. Or I could... Acrobatics, but I don't know if it'll be enough damage, and if it isn't, Alinta will die. I need to play this turn safe, and I need to fly on Grumpig while Jabiru uses return. We need to take the Grumpig out before it's able to power gem me again. Or it might just go for Jabiru. It did! Okay. Both Citrus Berries are gone as of right now. We need to play this very safe. Uh-oh. Um... I have to kill the Hariyama. It has to go away. If Fly doesn't take Grumpig out, one of them will die. It's gone. Oh my god. The stressors. The stressors. Whew! That was close. That was most certainly close. Nice work, Alenta and Jaburu. Oh my god, I can't believe these two are still doing so well. The bird duo that everybody thought was going to die so quickly because they're birds and they're weak to rock and electric. They have done outstandingly well together. I'm very surprised and pleased with how they've turned out. Definitely. With that being said, we're going to continue to fight with them because this guy over here has a throw, I believe. And I'm not fighting that with anything, anybody else, so let's take it on. What's this? Are you trying to thwart my attempts at love? Eat this karate chop. Well, I don't think throw gets karate chop. What does, though? Uh-oh. Lovely. That probably gets Karate Chop. Level 43 as well. I'm going to Feather Dance it immediately. Oh, the Citrus Berries! I forgot to give them more Citrus Berries. High Jump Kick! Oh, God. I can't roost. I have... No. No. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm acrobatics -ing. Because I don't have a Citrus Berry, Acrobatics is just my best bet here. High jump kick shouldn't do enough because it's resisted and it's, yeah, minus two. Unless it crit me, but it still wouldn't have done that much. Alright, now I can acrobatics. And that should clear this scrafty. Not quite. Alright, still going for that high jump kick too, which is interesting. That's, that's a crit. No, it's not. Interesting. Um, yeah, I'm an acrobatics. Just take it out. I'm pretty sure, certain the other Pokemon throw. And I don't think they get any rock type of moves. Except for, like, wide guard? If wide guard's a rock type attack, it might be. It is a throw. All right, I'm going to stay in. I'm pretty certain they don't get rock-type moves. I'm pretty certain they don't get rock-type moves. I am I should have used Roost. It's over. I should have used Roost. Oh, my God, Alinta. I did it, Dom. I should have used Roost. That would have been an able... It would have been a feeler. I knew I should have used Roost. They don't get Rock Slide upon level up, and I can prove it right now. That's a TM move. No, that's the wrong thing I wanted to look up. I'm so sad. No way. I could have prevented that. That's my own fault. They, The only Rock-type move they get upon level up is Wide Guard. I knew it. I should have played it safe anyways. Alenta is dead. No. Man. 
Citrus berries didn't matter, and I can take solace in that at least. Well, at least not yet anyways. I'm pretty sure return does more. So I'm gonna go for the return. Oh my god. No. No. Oh god. Does it have like mock punch or something? Okay, I'm so glad the citrus berries didn't matter. You know, I. N <sighs> it would have been able to take it, and I would have. What would I have done, though, if I used Roost and Rock Slide wouldn't have killed me? What would have I done? I did make that mistake. Roost? <sighs> Roost would have made it so I would have survived the Rock Slide. But what would have I done after that? I wouldn't have. I mean, I could have switched and then Feather Dance. Yeah, I could have actually. Probably. I could have switched Roosted and then... Not like this. <clears throat> Alinta. Alinta's been here forever. Alinta was the longest running member on the team. And it's the first Pokemon to die since Shallower City. <sighs> Man. I wish it was Jaburu. I just wish it was Jaburu. I know that's sick to say, but... I've used a Pidgeot. So many times. I've never gotten the chance to use a Talon Flame before. And I... That's my fault. It's my fault! I know it's my fault! I could have prevented it. I was certain they didn't have Rock-type moves, but even though... I, I should have still known there's a chance. Test it. I would have taken that Rock Slide... With a Roost. Because Roost, if you didn't know, does remove your flying type for that turn. Meaning I would have been able to take it. And then I could have planned accordingly. I could have switched, feather danced. That's what I should have done to begin with. This is my fault. And I'm not going to forget the Citrus Berry. I'm going to go put it on right now. Jaburu is the only member left of the original six. Because Alenta is dead. Wow. Well, with that being said, it's time to say goodbye to death number five of the Pokemon Y. No healing in battle wedlock challenge. Say goodbye to Alenta, the Talon Flame. This is gonna come down to the wire. Infestation, if it crits, we're done. It was a crit! You have to be freed now or this is over. We were freed! Alinta, you've gotta get back! Come on back, Alinta!
I had always wanted to use a Talonflame. They're one of my least favorite starting birds, but... Alento was really fun to use, and it is the final Pokemon left that Maryland nicknamed in the first episode. Soliantu and Venua fell long ago, and Alento was the next to join their fate. With that being said, it's time to say goodbye to Alenta. Goodbye. Man, I didn't think I'd see that one for a while. The, the bird duo is just doing so good, and they are f officially separated. But it does give my chan myself a chance to better our team. Because, well, that was a big problem. Their shared weakness. These two share weakness to water, but it's not as devastating. These two were weak to rock and electric. They were both birds, and... As much as I would love to use somebody like Dan Grain here, it's just not a good idea. Yeah, they would only be weak to rock, but Dan Grain and unfortunately Yaxa is completely out of the question. But I can add somebody to the team that will be very useful for upcoming areas. As of right now, Makumaku and Nakam are my pair for Olympia, which would be wouldn't be bad. I can get the sandstorm up. Crunch the first Pokemon. Oh, there's a Slow King. That's right. I had forgotten about the Slow King completely. Well, as of right now, we need to make a pair that would be really great for Olympia. And Jaburu is going to be somebody that could be really useful. There's a Meow Stick, there's a Sigilyph, and there's a Slow King. And Jaburu's not great, but I can add a partner for Jaburu that will be good enough to take on Olympia. So. We've got some options here. We have Orkin, the new pumpkin boo that we had caught. Uh, Lamina doesn't... Isn't a really good idea. I mean, it would be alright, but no. There's one Pokemon that I'm looking at, and that's no bag. I've always wanted to use a Malamar. And, well... No bag would be pretty amazing for... Olympia. I can slay all of the Pokemon pretty much, and if I absolutely have to, Jaburu can come in. The only weaknesses that these two would share is nothing. I'm pretty certain. What is everything in case week two? I can think about it, I just don't want to right now. So let's look it up on CRV. That's what I always use. Um, bug which, and fairy. Jabru resists Spug, so. I think No Bag is my best bet. Orkin would also be good, but they would both be weak to ice, which is a problem. It's just my best bet, and I've always wanted to use a Malamar, so I say, why not now? <sighs> Alenta's gone. Would anybody else be a better option? I just don't see anybody else. Can't use any of these guys. They're all males, obviously. So, I am going to go ahead and add No Bag, our NK, to the team. Unfortunately, we don't have Contrary, but... Suction Cups, we probably will get a Shiny while training her. Well, tra yeah, training her, so. Um, I don't really have a rule for Shiny Claws. Any Shinies, we'd get her a free Pokemon. But if it becomes absurd, I won't overdo it. But I could kind of cheese it to get, like, a Shiny Dragalge, which I think would be pretty cool. Just because it's a Pokemon that I wanted to use, and we did miss out on it. I'm not going to abuse it, but if I do train while fishing and I get a shiny fishing Pokemon, maybe I'll just allow one of them. I don't know, it's just very possible because it's really easy to do. Regardless, that's going to probably be it for this episode. We're going to have to train up Nobag, and I'm, I'm sure that one was pretty long still. So, in the next episode, oh man, that's so hard to see. I'm really, really forgetting to use a new Pokemon, but... 
the cost of a Linda like that is it's a pretty tough one to swallow. Yeah, I really wish it was Jaburu instead, but what can you do? I don't like saying stuff like that, but you guys know how I feel about Pidgeot. I've used it so many times, but Jaburu has been really great. So, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead in the next episode and get everybody on the team trained up to level 45. I did see somebody mention that they wanted to see me turn the DS upside down for no bag. I probably will do something interesting with that, and I will probably do my training on screen. So, with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this episode, regardless of what happened, a like is appreciated. It helps out a great deal. And if you want to see more Pokemon wedlocks like Pokemon Y, feel free to subscribe. And... In the next episode, we're going to finish the Frost Cavern and make our way to Anastar City. But until then, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.